The 20th ranked Temple Owls invade the Riley Center to take on the St. Bonaventure Bonnies. Temple is 3-0 in Atlantic 10 conference play. St. Bonaventure is also undefeated in the conference. The Owls feature one of the best point guards in the country in Pepe Sanchez. The Bonnies have perhaps the quickest point guard in the USA. It's Tim Wynn. It's winner take all, and it's next on Empire. here at the Riley Center, and let's first quickly begin with the Temple Owls. This is what has happened to Temple just in their last game. A victory over Fordham University, easily at 78-61. to 61. Pepe Sanchez, a career-high 12-6. Mark Karcher had 20 points. A 9-3 overall record, ranked 20th in the nation, and Peter, they are perfect when it comes to A-10 conference play, led by, of course, Pepe Sanchez. Jim, when you talk about key performance, you have to start with Pepe Sanchez. He's the quarterback. He's the leader. He's coming off a serious ankle injury. This is only his fourth game back from the injury, but he's playing well enough to be named the Atlantic 10 Co-Player of the Week last week. The other key performer for the Owls is Lamont Barnes. Barnes is the Iron Man performer for this program. He has started every single game since he set foot on campus as a freshman four years ago. Tonight will represent his 109th consecutive start. Well, when you talk about St. Bonaventure, you definitely have to talk about the trio of players. But first, we want to let you know that Bonnies are coming off a five-point win over St. Joe's just a few nights ago. They have an 11-2 overall record. They are also perfect as far as Atlantic 10 Conference play is concerned, and it all begins with Tim Wynn. Tim Wynn is the quarterback, the leader, the electrifying player in the backcourt that gets his teammates going. He gets the crowd going. He's finally come to the realization as a senior leader that he doesn't have to score 25 every night for this team to be successful. The other key performer for the Bonnies is his front court mate, Caswell Cyrus. Cyrus is the big center for the Bonnies, and the offense this year has flowed through Caswell Cyrus. He has responded well by being both productive in his points, and the team record indicates this approach is very successful. Pete, it's very interesting. It's only the middle of January, and this is hailed as one of the biggest games of the conference. What's going to happen when they meet up again later on? Right now, the battle of undefeated as far as the Atlantic 10 Conference is concerned. Kerry, back to you. Guys, Temple has absolutely dominated this series with Bonna, winning 35 of 39 meetings dating back to 1929. And while Temple is 13 and 4 here in Olean all time, Bonna has beaten the Owls here at the Raleigh Center three times in the last five seasons, including a 15-point victory in January of 99, a game in which Bonna connected 14 times from three-point range. When we return, we'll have the tip-off for you as the St. Bonaventure Bodies take on the 20th-ranked Temple Owls right here on the Empire Sports Network. It's often been said that life is a journey. Nowhere is life's journey more evident than at St. Bonaventure University, an institution of higher learning strongly rooted in the Franciscan tradition. A university situated in a geographical area that ranks second to none, where the individual comes first. A place where tomorrow's leaders are discovering themselves today. St. Bonaventure, isn't it time you started your journey? Visit our website at www.sbu.edu. 
Empire College Basketball is brought to you by the Document Company Xerox. Welcome back, everybody. The sold-out Riley Center, and what a tough ticket it was to get if you were going to come to this game this evening, Pete. Jim, I'll tell you what, people tried to get in hours before. Of course, some of us were here. You're one of those last-minute shows, but <laughs> you, there was no getting a ticket, and there were some phone calls made out of Buffalo today to get last-minute tickets. Nothing available. All right, let's go now to the starting five for Temple. We've already talked about Lamont Barnes. Mark Karcher is a guy who is going to have some big numbers. They need it from him tonight. Kevin Lyde, of course, is a terrific rebounder. Pepe Sanchez and Quintley, Quincy Watley round out the starting five, and a man that everybody respects throughout all of college basketball in his 18th season. It's John Chaney, the head coach of Temple. For St. Bonaventure, we talked about Caswell Cyrus and Tim Wynn, but Pete Von Possen is very important is how Bonaventure fares tonight. Patricio Prado is the freshman who can shoot the three. David Capers, a familiar and solid guard. And Jimmy Barron now in his eighth season as head coach at St. Bonaventure. And of course, he passed the 100 career victory mark this season. That's right, Jimmy Barron, 100 wins against Cleveland State. Roly Massimino, his opponent on the bench that game an old friend and mentor. Set to go from the Riley Center. Cyrus taps it and we're underway. <laughs> David Capers with the opening three. One of the keys for the bodies tonight, Jim, is they have to shoot the ball well against the matchup zone of the Isles. Great start by Capers. Speaking of zone defense, that's exactly the way that Bonaventure has come out. Well, they had good luck against Temple last year using the zone, and they're going to go at it again this time. Off the miss. Bonnie's have it, and they quickly move into front court. When the Capers, they work the ball around the perimeter. Now Prada. Entry pass. Cyrus has it knocked away. It'll still be Bonnie basketball. Kevin Lyde got his hand on it. Shooting the ball well against the Temple zone, we mentioned is important. Bonnie's last year, 14 three-point field goals. And they'll have to shoot like that again this year when they get back and face the zone in their half-court sets. Skip pass. Proud of set up from the outside. Great confidence booster for the young freshman who's shooting 40% from three-point range. Bonaventure again sets up in the 3-2 zone. Sanchez outside, swings to Watley, back to Pepe Sanchez. They'd like to go to Barnes on the block if they can. That three ball won't fall. Rebound, Peter Von Fossett. Here come the Bonnies the other way. Win pulls up and lets the three go. That one back off the back of the bracket. Battle for Sanchez controls. He's in the front court. Now the game starts to open up a little more. Pepe always under control. Looked like he had a transition opportunity. Didn't. Archer give it off down low on the block. And a big finish right there by Lyde. Oh, oh. Great drop off pass and a strong finish. No one was going to deny that move to the basket. 6-2, Bonaventure out in front. This is just the start the Bonnies needed, Jim. Shoot well from the outside to begin the game. Ball knocked away into the hands of Cyrus. Had it blocked from behind. Terrific play. Barnes and Lyde were both there. Karcher, he will shoot it from the outside, and that's why. He drains the three, and now it's just a one-point lead. Karcher is a key matchup for the Bonnies, although in the zone they don't match up individually with him, but he can shoot that three, or he can take the smaller defender inside and post him up. They will give Cyrus plenty of space. He's not going to take that three. Grotto thought about it, didn't pull the trigger. Swing into the corner, Capers, baseline in trouble. Kick out, Grotto's got it. That would short off the front of the iron. Not possible, not the score, comes up with it. Capers down low, tried to force the pass for Cyrus. It was knocked out of bounds. It stays right where we are, Bonaventure basketball. Good idea, poor execution, too many arms in the way. That front line, the Temple zone covers a lot of territory. 
Wynn will trigger on the inbounds pass. Patricio Prado penetrates, gets a cut off, stolen by Pepe Sanchez. He had five steals in the last game against Fordham. They don't call him El Bandito for nothing. Barnes fall away one-hander, and he drops it down. And just like that, Temple takes a one-point lead. And those are all high-percentage shots that the Temple Isles, with their deliberate offense, whether it's against man-to-man -man or zone, their deliberate offense, they're going to be effective if they reverse the ball and punch it inside against the zone. And they've got the size inside to shoot over Cyrus, although he'll always be a presence with his shot blocking, blocking ability. One thing they have to have is an inside presence, either from Von Possen or from Cyrus. And Von Possen can indeed hit that outside jump shot when he faces up, Pete. That's not a fluke. He's a standstill jump shooter. He can take that if they give it to him. Now watch the zone cheat out to him in the, in the next possession when he's out there. Yeah, you have to prove to the opposition that you can make that shot. Whistle stopping to play, and we're going to go the other way on the foul. Foul is on uh, Lamont Barnes down low. We're going to take a look at the moving screen down low. On Barnes. On Barnes, 32. Well, big number 30, Ron Rolderson, is checked into the lineup at 6'10 and a biscuit shy of 300 pounds. <laughs> he was a starter in last year's game here in the Riley Center. And I think everybody remembers what took place here. It was a 15-point Bonaventure big victory. That time, uh, Isaac King lit it up from everywhere. He had 24 in that game. Career night for Isaac. Prado lets it go from the outside. It's going to be off the mark. Von Posse tries to battle, has it knocked out of his hands, and Owls have it, and they're in front court. Sanchez controls. Inside pass. Rollerson immediately turns. That one won't fall. Von Posse has the rebound. Good block out by Von Possen, limiting the Owls to one attempt at the basket. Well, after a hot start, Bonaventure has missed their last three. They let another three go. That's David Capers, who is still hot. He's got six points to lead all scores. Exactly what the Bonnies need. That's the formula. Reverse the ball, hit it from the outside against the Temple zone. Stretch that zone out, open up passing lanes inside. Sanchez with the pump fake, and that's a great foul that he gets on Caswell Cyrus. And Cyrus is the guy that you definitely have to keep out of foul trouble if Bonaventure is going to be successful tonight. And certainly, Jim, as a coach, you want him to earn every foul he commits. In other words, no bad fouls, and that was a bad one. 14.53 to go. We're in the first half. Bonnie, 11. Owls, 7. More college hoops right here on the Empire Sports Network tomorrow at noon. It's Notre Dame and Syracuse. That's a terrific Big East Conference matchup. Notre Dame, by the way, went to UConn and beat the Huskies on their home court. Syracuse still undefeated. Only top-ranked team in the uh, 25 to be undefeated. It's a great game. It's tomorrow at noon. And they're coming off a couple of road victories, so they have been tested. This should be a great one. Now, David Capers has lit it up with his first two shots of the game as he's buried two big three-pointers and Bonaventure now with a four-point advantage at 11-7. And you see the shot selection by both teams at this time. Jim, usually the deliberate offensive style of Temple and their matchup zone defense takes the crowds out of the game on the road. The one thing that can put the crowd back into it is David Capers continuing to shoot at the face of starters discuss this how Temple's scoring prowess has gone up this season because they have more guys who are more accurate shooters evidenced by that little jump shot there by Karcher he's got five in the game and it's 11-9 in favor of Bonaventure Pete they have just scored more generally their games are in the 50s or low 60s now they're in the high 60s and 70s offensively it seems like uh, coach Cheney has given them the green light to pull the trigger a little more often from different spots on the floor but part of that mix also was Sanchez was out and he's the guy who controls the ball for them on the turnover on the errant pass Temple will take over Rolderson out Bonnie show their man-to-man -man defense now in this possession let's see how deliberate the, the owls are in their half-court set Sanchez 
drop it down low on the block. Hyde's got it, looking for room. Short off the front of the iron. Rebound battle for Black from behind by Cyrus. That's Lamont Barnes. He goes up again this time. A whistle of the foul. And I believe they caught Peter Von Possum. And if it isn't Von Possum, it's Caswell Cyrus with a second. But it's Peter Von Possum on first. Well, that would have been real important if it would have been Cyrus. He would have had to go to the bench, but it is on Von Possen. And you see the hard work down low by Lamont Barnes. He is a war horse, as we mentioned in the opening. This is his 109th consecutive start. He started every game since he showed up on campus four years ago. What a warrior. Now, Lamont Barnes is a 73% free throw shooter. got three points in this game. One point Bonaventure lead. We're down to 13.45 to go in the first half. Knocked away by Barnes. Cyrus got it back. That'll probably be a five-second count. It, yes, it is. is. Yes, it is. Pete, explain to everybody why they called that, because now a lot of people think because they have a 35-second shot clock, there's no five-second rule, but that's incorrect. No, there is a five-second count when the defender ties you up, but this year it will be alternate possession rather than give the ball over automatically to the defense for a good defensive play. That time the arrow went in the favor of the Owls, so it worked in their favor. Because if the arrow was going the other way, Bonnie's would have retained on that jump ball. I still don't like that rule. I figure you give it to the officials and let them toss it up. That's the way basketball is meant to be played. Yes, it was. Capers, who's hit his first two shots. Hasn't taken one for a few minutes now. Wynn tries to penetrate in traffic. Back outside Capers. Couldn't pull the trigger. Sanchez got there quickly. J.R. Bremer blocked from the side by Lamont Barnes. And here comes Sanchez on the run. Bounce pass down low, and that'll be a kicked ball, so it'll be a reset of the 35-second shot clock. You won't see many fast-break baskets by... Uh the Temple Isles because they don't want to play that up-tempo kind of game. They'd rather have a half-court game, as we said, to try to take the crowd out of it. Pepe Sanchez signaling for a little blow. I don't know if Coach Cheney is going to take him out, but this is the only area that he hasn't come back in strong fashion, and that is his win. He might wear down as the game goes on if he gets a lot of minutes. Robert Cheeks into the lineup, replacing Capers for substitution for Bonavich. Sanchez from the outside, the lefty drains the three. Only scoring five points a game so far since he's come back over the last four games, but he's really done the job in assists and in steals. As you mentioned, he had 12 steals in the last win against uh, Rhode Island. Win from way outside, he's got the nut as well. So Tim Wynn with his first basket of the night. That zone is so effective because it gives you so many different looks. They trap, they extend, they cheat the shooters. The only answer is hit those shots like Tim Wynn just did. Now you haven't seen anything down low on the block on the Bonaventure. It's all been perimeter game. Sanchez, that one won't go. Guess who? It's big Kevin Line who follows, scores, and he'll go to the free throw line for an old-fashioned three-point opportunity. Tim Wynn had no chance trying to box out Kevin Line to finish this playoff. Look at what happens on this shot. Pepe Sanchez penetrates. He's under control. Kevin Lyde is in, has inside position on Tim Wynn. Makes it look easy. Now that'll send Lyde to the line. That one won't fall. Rebound. Controlled by Temple. And Sanchez has it again. Watley on the outside. Back now to Pepe Sanchez. They play catch. Nothing down low on the block. Lyde is double teamed. Bonnie's back in their zone. Well, they had, they had more success with the zone than they did with a man-to-man. -man. Absolutely. Penetrating move by Watley. Sanchez can't get the shot off. Skip pass. Karcher lets it go. Got it. There's the one player you have to find on the perimeter because Karcher's hit a couple of jumpers already, and he knows where to find the holes in the zone to give him that opportunity. Mark Karcher is the leading scorer coming in at 16 points a contest, and he made that last one look pretty easy. Every time down the floor, they're showing a little different look in their zone. 2-3, three, 1-3-1. Three, they're extending it. They're trapping the corners. It's really hard to 
attack the zone. You see a different look every time down the floor. That pass by Cheeks knocked away off the turnover. Power back in front court. That was stolen by Jim Wynn as he stepped in front. Sanchez is back. Give it up. Bremer takes it in too hard. Cheeks tries to tap it. Couldn't do it. Rebound battle for it. Finally controlled by Barnes. Great opportunity for the bodies. Wynn knocks that one out of bounds. They have to convert those high percentage shots in a game like this. 10.44 to go in the first half of play. It's Temple out in front of St. Bonaventure, 17-14. Welcome back to the Raleigh Center, where Temple currently leads the Bonnie 17-14. Now, tonight's game marks Bonnie's first sellout since last year's Temple game. It was actually declared a sellout two weeks ago. Now, Bonnie's students are still on Christmas break as school doesn't start back up until Monday, but Bonnie made sure to reopen the dorms a day early to encourage students to return for this contest. And guys, something's telling me it didn't take much to convince them to cut their vacation a little short. What do you think? Well, and you're Jim, up, yeah, you're Jim right wants about to that be in way, on yeah. that celebration in the dormitories tonight at the Bunnies <laughs> win. <laughs> I'm staying, he said. I'm not leaving town. Yeah, it's a good town to no party No classes yet. tomorrow, nothing so, except registration on Monday. They'll be partying for two, three days. You can count on it. It's a great college atmosphere here in Olea. Bunnies showing in their man-to-man defense out of the timeout. Good pressure by Cheeks on Karcher, but then he worms his way through to the baseline. That one rattles and drops. Oh, boy. Tough move. That's how you become the leading scorer for the Temple Isles in a top 20 program. Shooting touches like that and the strength to finish the play, even though he was banged on the way up. He's got nine to lead all scores. Cheeks, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Has to give up the ball to win. Who drains the three? And it's a good thing that goes in because no one was underneath the rebounds that time. The perimeter game has kept the Bonnies alive and in it. Lynn Greer has checked into the lineup for the Temple Owls. He's got the ball right now. He is the second leading scorer on this team, and he comes off the bench. Yes, he's done an excellent job. Shoots the ball from three-point range at 40%, leading three-point field goal percentage. Down low on the block. That one slotted away, and here come the Bonnies. Win in front court, J.R. Bremer back to win. Around the perimeter, Cheeks looking for penetration down the center lane. Tried to hit Cyrus on a backdoor cut and missed it. Timmy Wynn showing some senior leadership, encouraging Cheeks as to what to do the next time he, when he's in that situation. And of course, when you have J.R. Bremer in the game, Jim, it gives the, uh, the Bonnies a three-guard look, and it's been effective for them in the early stages of the season. And you see the turnover ratio for both teams. Two-point Temple advantage. Crucio Prado back into the lineup now. Karcher lets another one go. This one won't fall. Tipped twice and finally dropped in. I believe it was Barnes who got it. Volleyball around the basket. The front line of the Owls have definitely asserted themselves early in this contest. Well, earlier we talked about Caswell Cyrus and he and Van Tossen had to be factors down low for St. Bonaventure. So far, neither one has really been a factor, although Van Tossen did hit an outside jump shot early in the game. Yes, they have to take over the defensive boards, number one, so they're not getting second and third shots because those are all high percentage tip-ins, and if they don't tip it in, most of the time they're going to draw a foul and get to the foul line in that situation. Capers will inbound. Wynn has it. Double team. Prado open. Stand still three. Too hard off the back of the yard. Whistle foul. And I believe it might be on Cyrus. If it is, it'll be his second. We will wait. It is yes, Caswell it is. Cyrus with an elbow. Clearing out underneath. Trying to get inside position for an offensive rebound. There it is. Oh, yeah. That's the throw right there. And with three referees, you can't do that in one standing right in front of one of them. 
So that is two on Caswell Cyrus, and Jim Barron is going to have a decision he's going to have to make, Pete. Absolutely, Jim, because now he'll be even less effective on the defensive boards trying to keep these big guys from tip-ins, offensive tip-ins. Sanchez, Smith moves down the line, follow away one-hander, off the mark, not passing, controlling. Big 6'11 kid doing what he does best. Boy, did he ever hit the weights in the offseason and really beef up the upper body. And it's really paid off. He's big, strong, and his statistics and his contribution to the team's success has, has definitely been indicated by the offseason work that he's done. Prado has to kick it out. They call it travel call. So another turnover for St. Bonaventure off the travel. 7.41 to go, first half of play. It's Temple 21, the body 17. You're watching college basketball on Empire. Welcome back to the Riley Center. Temple with a 21-17 advantage over Bonaventure. And here's one of the reasons why, Pete. Yeah, underneath you see the rebounds are being kept alive by the big front line of the Temple Isles. They have number one inside position, and number two, they're jumping and not standing there watching. Well, 11 to 8 advantage by Temple in the rebound department. Keaton Sanders is checking the line of battle for Temple, who comes in there after the timeout. Greer has it, now Sanchez. Finally switched back to the zone out of the timeout. Yeah, and look at Greer from way outside. Your man he Greer. that one. Wow. Score what a shooter. Not the leading scorer, but 15 a game off the bench. 15.3 to be exact. Yes. He would probably come over here and say, you guys got to put that point three on there. <laughs> Shooters are like that, aren't they? Yes, they are. They want, they want every tenth of a point. <laughs> Capers in traffic. Circus shot oh, with a left hand, and he draws the foul, and he's going to go to the line. You know, one of the other problems that a young player faces and a and, and this happens in the NCAA tournament and a new opponent against this temple zone defense is it's so hard to prepare for it's so hard to read it's so hard to figure out with the different looks they give you how to attack it so you saw a couple possessions ago uh, Patricio Prado turning the ball over trying to penetrate when the Temple Isles get in the NCAA, a lot of times they're more effective against opponents that haven't seen them play all year compared to their league play against Atlantic 10 Conference teams that have been preparing for the zone for uh, years and years with John Chaney at the helm. And he gets the second. Now he has eight points. Body show a little three-quarter court press. I think they needed to do something to change things up and uh, maybe slow down uh, the Owls a little bit. And that's how you create turnovers. Wynn's got it. Give it up on the far side. Stolen right back, however, as the Owls were able to get back defensively. Good transition defense by the Owls that time. Sanchez controlling in front court. J.R. Bremer has him defensively. He's back to the man to man now. And look down low on the block. Barnes backing in against Cyrus. The little running hook shot way off the mark. And I think Van Passen hit it last. No, he did not. It went off a Temple player after it hit Peter Van Passen. But Jim, that's a sign of an experienced team that recognizes Caswell Cyrus, two fouls. He's matched up with Barnes. I'm going right inside the Barnes and let him work on him to get that third. the 2-3 trap zone and so effective win kick it off Bremer lets it go from outside it'll be a three penetration from the wing by Tim Wynn set that opportunity up for Bremer and so far the Bonnies are staying in this one all with their perimeter game they've gotten nothing from down low on the block six for ten from three-point range wow look at Lynn Greer he just is a shooting machine. He doesn't have to start. He doesn't have to play 40 minutes. He only needs 22 minutes, and the guy's going to light it up for 20 points. And that's why the bodies are making him prove he can do that over the course of the game by playing so much zone against him. They want him to prove he can do that. 
Yeah, well, he's proved it already. Yes, he has. That'll be a traveling violation, although Capers is going to protest because he felt that the ball was grabbed and held, and he was trying to get a two-foot stop. That did not sit well with head coach Jim Barron. Well, after the last couple of Bonaventure timeouts, they started to attack the zone from the wing, get into the gaps, and then kick the ball back out for three-point attempts. It's been a lot more effective the last couple of possessions. That's a great strip by Wynn on the turnover. Tim Wynn behind the back dribble, but he kicked it off his foot, or did it go off Greer's foot? It went off Greer's foot and out of bounds. St. Bonaventure maintains possession. The Bonnies have turned it over eight times already. That's right, and a lot of it is in the half-court set attacking the zone defense. Normally, you get turnovers when a team plays man-to-man -man and pressures the ball a lot, but the Temple Isles are able to uh, generate turnovers out of their zone. That was a terrific strip by Wynn, and Bonaventure in business offensively. Bremer in traffic. From three, this time Von Fossen, it wouldn't fall. That's a little out of his range. Well, it also takes their leading rebounder out of rebounding position. So you leave all the rebounds on the offensive end up to uh, Caswell Cyrus, and he's not getting it done at this point. Cowles with Greer on the outside, being pressured there by Witt. Into the corner, Karcher head and shoulder pumping. Now pulls up and lets it go, and he got another one. Mark Karcher, what a great player. He can beat you with the three from uh, the three-point range. Then if you come out and play him tight, he'll put it on the floor and beat you off the dribble. As the defense rotates, he's a good enough ball handler and passer to get it to open people. So the offense flowing through him makes them very effective. He's in double figures. That'll be an up-and-down violation on Capers. Capers complaining that he had his arm held. Well, that's two times now that Capers has complained to these striped shirts. He's lost both. Yeah, and you, you can identify with that, can't you, Pete? Yes, I can. I, I'm old for my career <laughs> appealing to those guys in stripes. But I'll tell you what, both of those uh, appeals came off of turnovers, ball handling turnovers, trying to penetrate against the zone, which he needs to try and accomplish. But if you keep turning the ball over, we're going to have to have somebody else trying to do that. Ten win is probably the best out. Lamont Barnes, and that could be Barnes the second as well, and he and Cyrus both have two here early in the first half. 3.52 to go, first half, Temple Bonnies here at the Wiley Center. Thank you everybody about the Sabres back on ice Monday night, 10.30 right here on this world-class network. They're going to be out on the West Coast as they play in Anaheim, Paul Carrillo, Timo Solani, Sabres game night begins at 10, and then, of course, all the exciting action of Sabres hockey against the Mighty Ducks. Let's check in real quick with Kerry Sears. Kerry? Hey, Jim, coming up at halftime, Adelphia Communications chairman of the board, John Regas, will join us. We'll also head back to the Empire Studios, where Josh Moore will update us on all the latest NFL playoff action of the day, and Jim and Pete will have their analysis. Guys? Thank you, Kerry. Jim, you know, one of the good news for both teams is they go eight deep. They've got eight players that have played double-figure minutes, both teams. The bad news is when it's your two starting centers that are in foul trouble, you really don't want those subs in. <laughs> Not a seat to be had in this building. In fact, you got people standing in the, uh, in the hallway. Hope the fire marshal isn't watching this telecast. And if he's a college basketball fan, he's probably in this. Yeah, he's probably, yeah, he probably <laughs> is. Great college basketball atmosphere. This is what it's all about. Weber now win, who looks down low. Nothing there for Von Possum. Weber penetrating move in traffic. Throws up a wild shot that gets nothing but air and Temple controls it. <laughs> Eric Seekers, by the way, has checked into the lineup now for Bonaventure. First time we've seen him tonight. Win, pull up. That's going to be short. Seeker's got a hand on it, but couldn't control. And Archer grab it for Temple. Tim Wynn trying to create some easy opportunities in transition to basketball. And unsuccessful at the time. Captain Sanchez out of the game for the first time. Let's see how the Owls lead holds up. So he can't leave when Pepe went out with three minutes to go. Now, Karcher's just looking to spot up at every opportunity. It's every in good hands, I'd say. The lead is in good hands with Mark Karcher. 13 points now for Karcher here in the first half of play. And the Bonnies have not had an answer for him. 
not too many people have. Sink, yes. Skip it out. Wynn lets it go from way outside. Short off the iron by Passon and Cyrus can't control. Once again, Lyde, Karcher, and Sanders controlling the boards for Temple. Quincy Watley way outside. Now Lynn Greer. And Tim Wynn is faced up on him 30 feet away. Spinning move. That should be a traveling violation. They caught him. Good call. That was a travel as he tried to take Tim Wynn into the lane. Temple Isles are still being delivered in their offensive execution in the half-court sets without Pepe in the lineup. Well, this is one of the key matchups, Karcher and uh, Von Possen, and right now it's all Mark Karcher. Von Possen is going to have to get into this game, and that shot misses on the outside. Here's another rebound. Sanders has it for Temple. One and done for the Bonnie so far tonight, and that won't work against the top 20 team. Watley finds Greer, Sanchez at the scorer's table, and he'll check in the next opportunity. Down on the block, Lyde has it against Von Possum. They play the little two-man game. In traffic, Lyde goes up, can't get it to fall, tried to tip it, rebound back and forth. That dunk will not count, and I believe the foul will be against Temple. It is, and it could be on Mark Karcher. Coming over the back. And you watch the rebound follow here, and you see the action take place. Yeah. Karcher coming over Von Possum. Yeah, Jim, I think that uh, that's an opportunity that was missed by the Temple Isles because he turned around, faced the basket, and Caswell Cyrus was right in his face, didn't realize he had two fouls on him, should have taken him right to the basket to try and draw the third. Temple at a 50% clip from the field. The Bonnies at 37. That's why the Owls have the lead, 31-22. That and the fact that they're shooting mostly from the outside. They have got nothing down low on the block. Sechris is going to be way off the mark with that one. And the big guy, Rollerson, comes up with it. Boy, the earth moved when he came down from <laughs> jumping. <laughs> he cleared out a few bodies and out that, there. That'll be a timeout call by John Cheney in the Owls. Good timeout. Didn't want to. It doesn't carry over the second half, so he wanted to take advantage of it. They call it a full timeout. We have 59 seconds left to go in the first half. 31-22 in favor of Temple. We talked about what Pepe Sanchez means to this team. And when he was out of the lineup and missed those games, it was a situation where Sanchez was the guy who now makes the motor run, Pete. And it's pretty obvious what is happening when Temple does what they do best with him handling the basketball. There's a doubleheader MAC conference basketball game coming up for you. It's Canisius at Marist, Niagara at Siena. It'll be live Monday beginning at 4.30 here on Empire. And Jim, to build on the point you just made, which is a great one, while he was out, Pepe Sanchez had the chance to sit next to the coaching staff and listen to their response and reaction to what was going on out on the floor. He learned a lot. He is not trying to do as much. He does not get as frustrated when people are not finishing plays now as he did before the injury. Great learning experience. You obviously don't want to sit your best player on the bench next to you for a stretch of games like it happened because of the injury, but at least that is an additional benefit that comes out of that time away from play. The other thing also that I have noticed about Pepe Sanchez and the way that the Owls offense is being run, and you know this from watching the way John Chaney coaches. It used to be in the hands of the point guard. Whether if it was Mark Macon, Rick Brunson, or Pepe Sanchez, they would dribble the ball for 30 seconds, yep. and then in the last five seconds, try to figure out a way to get a shot. Yep. They don't do that anymore. Well, they have so much talent on this team, and, and they have so many offensive weapons. It's e Once it gets in the Karcher's hands, I mean, the offense is flowing through him, and they're most effective when that happens because he can do it from the outside, from the inside, and off the dribble. Sanchez has it in front court. Prado back in the lineup now. And the bodies in man-to-man -man defense. Now this is more like the temple we used to see, the point guard hanging on to the basketball. But it's because the game clock is running down. And so is the shot clock at six seconds and a whistle and a reach-in foul. Mark Karcher again 
working on David Capers, taking him into the lane, owning him when he gets there because he's so bigger and stronger that he can go right up off the dribble and get the shot off. That is the first personal on Capers and the fifth team foul against St. Bonaventure. Sanders, he will not take the three. John Cheney shouting from the bench, use it all, use it all. You see the difference between the shot clock and the game clock. It's only a second and a half. And the ball is in good hands. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Cheney knows what he talks about. <laughs> You'll see him start to take it probably at about eight seconds. Now we're down to 10, 9, 8. Watch Sanchez start to move. Center of the court, now at 5. Four. He's going to have to hurry. The penetrating move, the pull-up is going to be way off the mark, and that will not count. It was after, after the buzzer sounded. And there is point, or there is uh, 1.6 seconds remaining on the game clock. So the Bonnies have an opportunity to fire off one last salvo before we go to halftime. We're just making sure that that's the amount of time that's left. Officials oh. now are changing it back to 2.7. Yeah. So that now you don't have to throw it the entire length of the court. In fact, you could throw it a pass to half and call a quick timeout and then have the ball inbounded at the half court mark. And Bonnie's have timeouts. They go left. full length upon pass, and that was a push in the back by Rollerson. No Everybody call. screams, and there was no foul. No call. And now Temple has the ball with 2.7 seconds which is also plenty of time to get a shot underneath your own basket. And they get it back down at the offensive end where they want it. Absolutely, that's the rule. When the ball doesn't touch anybody inbounds and go to the opposite end, they get it under their own basket, so fortunes have turned quickly for the Bonnets. And not for the good, but they have for the Owls on the inbounds. Sanchez forces it up off the glass, and that one will count, and the first half comes to a close. So they worked that play to perfection. They got it into the hands of the guy they wanted to get it into, and Pepe Sanchez, despite the fact that he didn't score great in the first half, was A, the number one assist man, B, the number one steals man, and C, the guy who controlled the offense totally. That's right. The biggest part of that is he was always under control, and he was always able to finish the play, whatever it was, because he was under control. Look at this, under control, gets the shot off. Prado's right there, couldn't even get a hand up on it. Five points in the first half for Pepe Sanchez. It's Temple out in front of St. Bonaventure. The Owls 33, the Bonnies 22. We'll be back with more from the Riley Center here on the Empire Sports Network. Welcome back, everybody. Sold out Riley Center, and it's halftime at 33-22. Jim Brinson along with Pete Lonigan here, and we have seen a very interesting first half of college basketball, Pete, just from the simple standpoint how well that John Cheney has prepared his team to come in here and, A, play before a sold-out, truly electric atmosphere, and, B, pretty much shut down the St. Bonaventure team with their inside game. You haven't heard Caswell Cyrus's name called once so far in this game, and Peter Von Possen has only been called one time. It, you almost get the sense, Jim, that the Bonnies are settling for the perimeter shot because they can't get the ball inside to those two people on the offensive end of the floor. And the defense of the Owls is ranked once again, to no surprise of anybody that follows Atlantic 10 basketball, the number one defense in the league for an excellent reason. We went through it a couple times during the first half, but the point is this, that matchup zone defense, Temple gives you so many different looks. Sometimes they trap on the wing. Sometimes they have Pepe out front, and he's trying to steer the ball or direct the ball in one, to one side of the floor or the other. They'll extend. They'll flatten out. They'll cheat the shooters. So for especially young players, Prado, we haven't heard his name called exactly. very much. He's a young player. This is the first time he's seen this defense, and so it's very difficult to read, to find out how to attack, and it will come with experience. 
Wynn and Caswell Cyrus have seen it for four years, so they're used to it. The other players are still getting used to attacking this because they don't see this defense except when they play the outs. And for St. Bonaventure, I think if they're going to have any success to climb back into this game in the second half, they're going to have to get inside play by Cyrus and by Peter Von Possen. We have a special interview here at halftime coming up for you. Let's once again send it over to Carrie Sayers. Carrie? Thanks, guys. Currently joining the Adelphia Communications Chairman of the Board, John Regas and Mr. Regas. It's been a few years since Bana has faced a top 25 team, and you must be absolutely thrilled to be here to witness it with the others here in this sold-out crowd. Well, you know, it's, watching the Bonnies all these years, it's nice that they're in this position. It's been a long, long struggle to get back here, and... They're really playing a great team out there. You know, uh, Temple is, uh, is strong, and um, they're executing well, and it's hard for his bodies to, uh, to penetrate that zone defense. Well, let's talk a little bit about their season. It's been almost three decades since they've had such a great start, regardless of how this one finishes. What's that been like for you? Well, it's, you know, I, I have to go back. and My first... Um, game was way back in 1942 and 43 season I saw the Bonnies uh, beat um, Canisius I think it was 32 to 33 and Mike Riley was a coach and then I went through that period with Eddie Melvin for all of the old time Bonnie fans that uh, Bob Sassone was on the team and we went through Eddie Donovan years with the Tom Stith and they were a wonderful wonderful team and they were in the NCAA year after year and then we had Bob Lanier in that uh, three years of just super high. Then Jimmy Sadlin came along with his team, won NIT. So it's been a great memories, great ride. And yeah, you know, the last 10 years have not been too uh, wonderful, 15. But we stayed with them. And it's just great to be back here. And yeah, you know, um, uh, the Bonnies um, this year, um, have uh, brought it up. Uh, they got um, a team that um, can uh, land in the top 25, hopefully. Mr. Regas, I would be remiss if I did not ask you about your hockey team, the Buffalo Sabres. Last night after the loss to Montreal, Lindy Ruff saying that it's maybe time to make some trades. In your mind, is that what has to happen? And where do you feel they need the most help? Well, I think that... Um, it isn't as that we haven't been looking for a trade. We really, truly have. And I think that that period, from my um, observation, when we went into, uh, we had nine home games during the holiday season. You know, we were waiting to see if we didn't perform the way we wanted to. And very honestly, uh, uh, the team hasn't played up to its potential. So yeah, you know, uh, Darcy's working real hard to look for something that's going to give us that push. And uh, we think something has to happen. Darcy alluded to it. It isn't a, it didn't be a surprise. And I know the frustration the fans are having. The team, you know, the team is working hard, and yet there's something lacking out there. Leadership, whatever it is, we need a spark. And maybe that has to come through a trade. Well, we, uh, I know the Amherst, their farm team, were supposed to take front and center stage today, but gracefully uh, stepped aside to uh, allow this game to happen, and I'm sure you're happy with that as well. Well, I, I want to do a thing. I want to, I was going to mention that. I, you know, it was very gracious of the Amherst uh, management and ownership to uh, uh, move their date so we could televise this for the basketball fans throughout western New York. and, and the, you know, and I know that that was kind of a special favor, uh, somewhat on my behalf, uh, and uh, I have to make it up to them. But getting back to the Sabres, I'd just like to say that I haven't given up on a team. Western Swing will be um, informative, and, um, you know, uh, but uh, I think we understand how serious the problem is. Right. Thank you for your time, Mr. Regas, and enjoy the rest of this game. My pleasure. Once nice to see you. You too. Once again, Mr. John Regas joining us here at the Riley Center. We'll have more halftime here from OEM after we return from an Empire Sports Report update with Josh Mora. 
It's Temple 33, St. Bonaventure 22 at the break. You're watching A-10 Basketball on the Empire Sports Network. Looking for that special gift for a St. Bonaventure fan or alumnus? St. Bonaventure has launched a new logo, and you can see their fashions at the Sports Locker online store. From hats to golf shirts to t-shirts, the Sports Locker, in cooperation with St. Bonaventure, is offering lettered apparel with the new Wolf logo. There's no need to drive to Olean to purchase these new designs. Check them out at www.sportslockeronline.com or call 1-888-LOCKER-1 for all your St. Bonaventure apparel. Welcome back, everybody. Sold out Riley Center. Disappointed if you are a Bonaventure fan right now. At 33-22, the Owls in front. Jim Brinson, Pete Lonigan, along with our very own Kerry Sayers. We are here at the Riley Center. You know, Pete, it's interesting as you check out some of the things that took place in the first half. The domination down low on the low block by the Temple Owls against what you thought was a solid low block game presented by Bonaventure, but you haven't seen it tonight. No, you haven't, Jim, and there you see the Owls attacking the Bonnie zone defense, a pass, a dribble, and then a drop-off pass. Now we're looking at a shot from the outside by Karcher in the inside position of the Temple Owls, boxing out and tipping in to keep the ball alive. Second shots when you miss the initial effort. Here we have some success by the Bonnies on penetration from the wing by Tim Wynn. He kicks it out to Bremer for the three-point jumper. That's the best attack that Bonnie showed the entire first half with dribble penetration. And finally, we have Karcher taking Seacrest off the dribble, and everyone he met who matched up with Karcher in the first half, he owned. He took them all off the dribble and scored. And he has been unstoppable so far in the first half of play, and the statistics will bear out what Pete was just talking about. The field goals, 50% to 35%. You see the difference in three-pointers. The key, however, are the rebounds, 19 to 10, and seven of those 19 have been offensive for Temple. One offensive rebound for the Bonnies in the first 20 minutes. The team average is 71 points a game, and they only have 22. That's why. All right, everybody, we're going to take a timeout. When we come back, the start of the second half after this. They just matched their total effort on the offensive boards with that offensive rebound that time, Jim. And then Prado wasn't looking, and uh, an unforced turnover occurs. Sanders back into the lineup. Lyde sits down now for Temple. Bonnies have got to really go inside and try to get to the one-on-one -on -one this half so that they can put some points on the scoreboard. They've got to get guys on the foul line, Pete. They haven't been able to do that either. They need to put points on the scoreboard while the clock is stopped. That's the way you climb back into the game. Sanchez looking for move down the center lane. Nothing there. Kicks it back outside. The outside shot too hard. Rebound Cyrus. Battles for it. Knocked out of bounds. Stay here, say the officials. It'll be Owls basketball. And if you had to pick a team you didn't want to play catch-up basketball against, it has to be the Temple Owls because of their deliberate style. And they will slow it down even more than what we saw at times in the first half. Sanchez pull up outside, short off the fire. Rebound, battle for Wynn goes after it and wins that battle. So the smallest guy on the floor comes up big in between the big fellas. And they need a few more of those kind of plays to get back into this contest. Capers, Cyrus. Nothing for him. They have cut him off each and every time. Now win. They look for Von Tossen down low. It'll be a pushing foul, and it'll be on Sanchez. Dribble penetration created the foul. Jim, notice how far they extend this zone, right to the sideline. They're not going to give David Capers, after he hit his first couple of threes, another good look at the basket all night. They look to Cyrus. Nothing there. Stolen away. Here comes Quincy Watley into front court. He slows it. Now Karcher back to Watley. He's going to pull the trigger on three. And he got it. Ooh, 28 seconds left on the shot clock. That's that amazing. The they don't do that very yeah. often. That's uh, Watley's first basket of the game. They'll be reviewing that in the tape session. <laughs> Instead of a 6 a.m. practice, it'll be a 5 a.m. Because he shot it too soon. From the outside, Prado breaks the three. The Bonnies need Prado to get hot also. 
You know, one of the other things that zone does to you, you saw Van Possen with his back to the basket when he handled the ball. Archer outside. McCallum go down low on the block. Lamont Barnes against Van Possen. Solid defense that time of Van Possen. And that one won't go by Sanchez. Run down in the corner by Prado. Here comes Bonovic. They try to force the ball in the bad possible. To be honest with you, Pete, I think they need to try to get it in this guy's hands. He can score. He knows how to get contact. He also knows how to get to the free throw line. He's very comfortable. He's very confident in his role this year, and his numbers have indicated that he's responded well to that responsibility they give him. Capers in and out from the three. Sanders collects it for Temple. Now Sanchez in front court. the corner for the three. That one won't fall. Cyrus with a rebound. On the break. Prado right to the hoop. The left hand scoop is good. Nice play by the freshman. The bodies have got to try to do that. Get out and get some high percentage shots in transition. The three point tri uh, perimeter game of Temple will propel the fast break of the bodies on the long rebound. Well, Caswell Cyrus, that was his first rebound of the game. Still maintaining possession. Spin move down low. Barnes, nothing there. Von Possum cut him off from the outside. That one won't fall. Rebound battle. We got a push in underneath. Was it on Tim Wynn? Tim Wynn, 5'10. Plato. How can Tim Wynn six, push four. Sanders out of there, who weighs 250 and he's 6'7? Well, well, the two of them were trying to fit. Run together and together they were trying to move the 6'6 six, six guy. Are you me? 5'10 yep. and 6'4 uh, trying to push out the 6'6 six, six guy. 36 27, Temple out front of Bonaventure. Big East basketball, everybody. It's coming your way, and you can find it right here on the Empire Sports Network, live tomorrow at noon. Notre Dame and undefeated Syracuse, rated sixth in the country, plays here on the Empire Sports Network. Don't miss it. Sunday at noon, Empire Sports Network, the Cuse, and the Fighting Irish. Jim, one of the reasons both of these teams are so good and having successful seasons, Temple, of course, leads the Atlantic 10 in field goal defense percentage. 37% they're holding their opponents to. They improved that to 35. They held the Bonnies to in the first half. And the Bonnies are holding their opponents to 40%. However, Temple shot 50 in the first half. Sanchez controlling out front. Prano has him defensively. On a venture, and the man defense. Sanders. And now you see Sanchez hold the ball as they run some clock. Time on the clock, it'll be a reach in call on Wynn. Tim Wynn wanted a five second call, but he was not going to get it because Sanchez did make a move toward the basket, and then the five second clock starts all over again. And notice how Watley knows what to do with the ball when he's in trouble. Where are you, Pepe? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. Am I glad you're back? Yeah, get it out of my hands. Let me give it to Sanchez. Yep. That is three fouls on Tim Wynn. One more time, and need I say who it is? Mr. Carter does it again. He showed us why he's leading this team in scoring. 16 points, Mark Carter. Came in averaging 50. Outside, Prado thought about it. In traffic, kicks it outside. Will is open for a three. Can't answer. That pass and tips it, knocked out of bounds touch by Bonaventure it'll be the Owls basketball you can just see the look of frustration on Caswell Cyrus's face he Jim Wynn wide open good look at the basket unable to connect Caswell Cyrus a can't get any touches on the offensive end at all they have just shut down Caswell Cyrus that big Lamont Barnes 
Sanders. Archer. Rollerson when he's in. Along the line. Here's Barnes, center of the lane. Forces his way in. Short one won't go. Tip once, tip twice. Rebound battle. Whistle foul is going to be on Barnes. Over the top. You know, I'm sure John Chaney can live with these kind of fouls, though, because they're, look at him, foul his shot. He's going to attack the basket. He's going after offensive rebounds. That's what you want. That'll be the third personal on Lamont Barnes, and he will have to come out. An awful lot of banging and a lot of fouls I saw yep. happen before the whistle blew. And the big guy, Rod Rolderson, is back in out of Pensacola, New Jersey, at 6'10", enlisted at a mere 290. Jim Barron is Steve. Yeah, another unforced turnover. Barron's got to move the defense up the floor a little bit and try and create some opportunities for turnovers to get some high percentage attempts in transition. Bonaventure going to the trap. And the front court, the Owls. Eight to ten, second count. Sanchez controls. Capers has him defensively. foul on Patricio Prado. And when you put yourself at that disadvantage defensively, take a look at this. You're behind the shooter. You put yourself at that disadvantage. Usually you're going to get the foul call, whether it's clean or it isn't. And it looked clean that time. Second personal on Prado. They need him in the lineup for his perimeter shooting touch. Caswell Cyrus from getting his touches, and they're doing it. He's another victim of the great temporary zone defense. They've just been in passing lanes with hands up. They've fronted them. They've double teamed them. He has been totally ineffective tonight. They've taken him out of the game and said, beat us from the outside, because Isaac King isn't here anymore. <laughs> now for St. Bonaventure. Down low, Cyrus finally got a touch and had to kick it back outside. Win, penetrating move, and it'll be a hold ball. And it'll be on Lynn Greer. The only way the Bonners will get to the one-on-one, -on -one, it looks like, is from, get, if they get to if they get to the foul line, I mean, is in a one-on-one -on -one situation, because they are not able to attack the basket, and they're not getting enough offensive rebounds to get to the foul line. You've got to take the ball to the rack, though, and try to draw contact. If you get your shot spotted away, so be it. you still got to go there. Especially when you're behind. You've got to attack the basket to stop the clock and put some points on the board while the clock is stopped because that clock is now your enemy when you're playing Temple. And that one rattles and drops for Tim Wynn. And it'll be a three for Wynn. He now has nine. But once again, we're still talking about a perimeter game, an 11-point lead for the Owls. Body show all men and men this half, which they need to do is, is they trail significantly and need to try to put some pressure on the ball in the cross court. Sanchez. Down to five now on the shot clock. In traffic, Greer falls away. Blocked by Cyrus on a terrific play. He always looks in the background, and that was a great defensive play by him. He's getting a little more involved, and maybe that'll get him going on the offensive end. Here's the skip pass stolen away. Sanchez has got it. Pepe on the run. Pulls up. Too hard off the window. The bodies have it. The presence of Weber. They quickly come back. Outside win. Lob pass. Cyrus knocked away. Bound pass and thought he had it, and then he lost it. Now, that's terrific defense by Temple. Outstanding. They're in the passing lanes. They're in position inside, so the bodies can't lob over the top. Glenn Greer. Watley from the corner, too hard. Von Possen trying to control. Ball knocked away. It comes out to win. Win on the run. In the front court. Gives it up on the side. Prado spots. Off the wire. No good. Sanchez has it. Here come the Owls. 
Well, that is the pace that Bonaventure would like to have this game, but immediately Sanchez steps in the front court and shuts everything down. That's right, and it looks like he's a little winded, and that's the one area that he has had trouble coming back off the injury, the ankle. Way outside Sanchez, and that's going to be short off the island. Rollerson collects it, follows. Cyrus can't afford to pick up another foul. Helpless around the uh, basket now. And Rollerson, of course, is so big and strong. Cyrus really going to stop him anyways when he gets the ball that well, close. Well, if Rollerson dropped 30 or 40, he would really be effective in there. Absolutely. Truly be effective, yeah. and his stamina would be much, much better as well. That's right. 10.39 to go. We're in the second half. It's a 13-point advantage for Temple over the Bonnies at 43 to 30. Watch what happens here as Rollerson clears the spot for himself and goes up and over Caswell Cyrus. Pete. Completely under control, Jim. He reestablishes his balance after he got the one-handed rebound, went up strong and attacked the basket. The only thing that was going to stop him was if Cyrus uh, fouled him and he wasn't going to get another foul doing that. All right, let's quickly remind you about upcoming programming here on Empire. It's Sabres Hockey. They begin a West Coast trip that will take them to Anaheim against the Mighty Ducks. It's set for Monday. Monday. Face off a little after 10.30. It all starts with Russell game night at 10 o'clock. Of course, that's a full half hour of hockey info that you need to know to get yourself ready for the game. Once again, the Sabres back on the Empire Sports Network Monday night. Ron Roberson, of course, will be the heir apparent to Lamont Barnes when Barnes leaves the program this year. So maybe he'll be slimmed down and spelt like uh, like yourself, Jim, <laughs> next year when they come to OAN. Cyrus way outside, couldn't get it to rattle the drop. Rollers and clears it out. He is a force. He's though. a load. <laughs> wow. And this kid has basketball talent, too. Don't be fooled by the curve. Well, don't forget, he was in the starting lineup last year in this game for Kevin Lyon. Way outside, Lindgren. Can't get it. Rollers the that be an offensive Cyrus away with his free arm. Breaking the action. We have 10.03 to go. It's a 13-point Temple lead. 43-30. You're watching college basketball here on the Empire Sports Network. Mike and John Regas looking on here at the Riley Center. Packed house, of course. Jim, the uh, Temple Owls averaged seven, uh, nine turnovers a game. At halftime, they already had seven, but they have not turned the ball over in the second half in their efforts to uh, protect this lead here in a really, really tough place to play. But they have been successful at taking the Wiley Center crowd out of the game tonight. Well, you see the difference in rebounding total. Offensive, 12-2. Temple has owned the boards tonight. Bremer back outside, Wynn has it. In traffic, give it off, Bremer from the corner, and that one won't fall. Rebound, Cyrus with the follow! That's what they need. His first basket of the game. Get the crowd back into it, Jim. The Bonnies need some help from their sixth man, the student body, who came back early from semester break to see this one tonight. Sanchez in traffic, back outside it comes. This is the man they want to take the shot. Karcher, that one won't fall. Rolderson tried to clear it and then lost it. Bonnie's on the move the other way. Tough move in traffic, put up and in. Bonaventure trying to make a run and get back in it. Vidal Messiah with his first action of the night. A couple of stops on defense and some conversions on offense. We'll get the bodies right back into it, and the crowd is into it now, so that'll be a big help. They let Lynn Greer operate on the outside. Take the ball out of Sanchez's hands. He spots for three. It's way short. Knocked out of bounds. Last cut by Temple. Good defense is set by the bodies that time. Forcing the perimeter shot by Pepe Sanchez. They've got to continue to convert on offense to get back into this thing. Well, 
you stay with a perimeter game or do you try to force something down low now? Well, you've got to take a look at Cyrus inside to see if he can continue to be aggressive going to the basket like he did last time on the rebound. But if that's not there, your shot clock will dictate that you've got to take the perimeter shot. Well, Wynn takes one from about 23 away and couldn't get it to drop. With 20-some seconds on the shot clock, too. Could have found maybe something a lot better than that. Absolutely. Down low, Karcher in traffic, forces himself toward the basket, up and in, the follow by Lamont Barnes. Welcome back, big guy. Just came back into the game. He's in foul trouble. He's a veteran player, and he's got to play smart, even though he has three fouls on him. Seven points for Barnes. Bremer in heavy traffic, forces up an off-balance shot. Cyrus has got it. Too hard off the iron. Players go down. Rebound. Knocked out of bounds. It'll be St. Bonaventure basketball. <laughs> in the action with 7.26 to go in the contest. Temple 45, the Bonnies 34, back in a moment. Out in front of St. Bonaventure. And we hope you're hearing our audio okay. We had a technical problem, but now it's uh, apparently been rectified. Bonnies have done a good job on Karcher so far in the second half, except this time he got caught in a mismatch. They recognized it, took advantage of it. Tim Wim can no way match up with them. J.R. Bremer drains it from the outside. He has six in this game, and Bonaventure is now cut the margin under the double-digit deficit. Barnes tried to tip it in, it wouldn't go, controlled by Cyrus. And this place is into it. If Bonaventure <laughs> scores here, the roof could go at any moment. And we've got a game on our hands if that happens. Back outside, Bremer for three, got it! we got a game. Inside, outside. Into Cyrus, out to Brimmer. That's the way to attack that zone. Good execution by the bodies. Pressure in the backcourt. Owls beat it. Karcher will not take that shot. They swing it to Watley. He won't take that one either. The question is, how long will John Cheney hold Pepe Sanchez, his floor leader, out of the game now that it's a five-point contest with six minutes to go? Watley. Takes it in underneath. Wild shot won't go. Put up and in. That'll be a foul on Cyrus. Third Gaswell, foul. Yep, Gaswell with his third personal foul and the fifth team foul. We'll see, him. We'll see Wiley going back up again. Got him on the definitely. arm. Yeah, definitely a foul. You got to give Watley a lot of credit, though, for hanging in there with the big guys. Oh, absolutely. And that's what you do with shot blockers. You take it right to him, pump fake, and try and draw the foul. And he, he did that successfully, earned a trip to the foul line, stopped play so we can get the floor leader and quarterback back in the game. Couldn't write the script any better than that. You called it. Oh, yeah. Seven points now, Quincy Watley, and it's back to a seven-point margin. Pepe Sanchez back in the lineup now for Temple. Wynn will bring it into front court. Different look now, Pepe up front on the zone, picking the ball up as it comes over half court. No good look at the basket for Capers. Bremer in traffic, not going to go anywhere with the trees down there. Quickly out on the break, a rare opportunity for the Owls. And look at this, he's going to pull up and shoot the three and it won't go. On Lamont Barnes, it is. That is four on Lamont Barnes. Well, we're going to see if we're going to see the big guy, Rollerson, coming up here again. He's well, been effective uh, in the short minutes that he has played. But this guy has played for four years, and, and this is a result of Capers just getting inside position. He didn't do anything more than just stand there, and Barnes went over the top. So the key is to get the defensive position so that you can draw those over the back five. Capers trapped in the corner. Skip pass is going to be picked off, and they will rule out of bounds. It'll be Bonaventure basketball. And Karcher wants a foul, but he's not going to get the call. Yeah, when you see this 
this unfold. He intercepts the pass. He's not under control. And he would have got called for travel if it didn't call for the ball going out of bounds off his hands last. Down to 5.15 to play in the game. Lots of time on the shot clock for Bonnie. Bremer, he's been hot the last couple of times down. Outside win. Now Prada, who's back in the lineup for St. Bonaventure in traffic. Skip pass and they whistle it off and stop play. It'll be a reach in foul and it'll be on Pepe Sanchez. And that'll be the 17th foul that will put the Bonnies on the foul line for the one and one. All right, for Pepe Sanchez, his second personal time is called. John Cheney not pleased with what he has seen so far, despite the fact his owls have a seven point lead here in totally hostile environment. Well, let's give credit to the Bonnies. As much as they've struggled tonight, Jim, they are within seven points. If they convert these two foul shots, it's a five-point game with five minutes to go. That's got to give them a lift. If the crowd gets into it down the stretch, it could be a whole different ball game. And for Jim Barron, he's, of course, trying to rally his club, saying, look, you guys have played hard enough to play yourself back into this contest. Don't give it away now. Absolutely. All right, everybody, of course, quick reminder, college basketball, it's a double dip coming your way Monday afternoon. It all begins at 4.30. Canisius will battle Maris, followed by Niagara and Siena. Two great matchups. The only place to find them right here. It's the Empire Sports Network. It all starts at 4.30. Doubleheader basketball here on Empire. And it'll be tough for those teams to emulate what is going on here tonight. <laughs> this is a great one. Patricio Prado, one of the best foul shooters on the team, shooting 76%. Great poise for a freshman, great confidence by the coaching staff to have him in a big game like this. And he's moving the double figures now. He has 10. He's going to show that a little bit of pressure down. to finish that play. Nine points now. Lovely. Seven point advantage for the Owls. The Prado. Down on the block. This is where Van Passen likes it. You see why. He almost got it, but he threw the foul, and he'll go to the line and shoot two. And that's Barnes. And that'll be it. That's it for Lamont Barnes. Still talking to the officials, but it will do him no good. Oh, and Lamont Barnes is gone. It's another one of those appeal deals, huh? <laughs> that you don't win? You, you don't, don't win, though. Win. No. And you know what? Well, you he, already told me you were O for the millennium in yes. appeals. Van Possen posting up with a strong move to the basket, draws the foul. A lot of times, all you have to do is get the ball in that position, and you're going to get the benefit of the doubt on the foul call if you go hard to the basket. Is it always a question of officials anticipating contact? Well, I think this. The officials tonight have been fairly consistent from the standpoint that they have allowed the big guys to bang underneath, and they haven't ruined the game by blowing the whistle with a lot of touch fouls and cheap contact calls. So now that the game's on the line, they're going to tighten it up a little bit, especially if the Bonnies will be patient enough to get the ball inside and they go hard to the basket. Quick program reminder for everybody. Coming up, 10.30, Empire Sports Report. Josh Morrow will have highlights, of course, of this game. Also, Rochester Syracuse highlights. That's AHL hockey. And interviews from tonight's contest, as well as the Rochester Syracuse game. Temple now with two turnovers. 
Bonnie's in and you see the uh, timeouts remaining for Temple and for Bonaventure. Right. And with five team fouls, the Bonnie's can afford to be aggressive on defense to keep climbing back into this game because they've got two more fouls before they put the Owls in the uh, one and one Any main field goal or free throw will also allow them to get into their full court pressure. So all of this is working in their favor right now. Time passes only with three points. And John Cheney just got a technical foul right in front of our broadcast position. And he could get another. I don't know what happened. He threw something down on the floor. Yep. There's uh, garbage all over the floor right yeah. in front of his People bench. Are People are throwing. And now Jim Barron has to announce it. still hot and quite frankly I don't blame him absolutely especially when something comes out of the stands I don't understand how you can punish the coach in this and situation. you see it right there on the there floor there it is yeah you can't punish the coach yeah you can't take it out he's, you know all he's trying to do is protect players especially absolutely. his of course absolutely. it's all over in front in fact yeah. it's right in front of us we got a good look at it and that of course is right near the temple bench and there you see the garbage on the floor. You don't think they were throwing that at us, Jim, do you? Uh, no, I, maybe at you, Pete. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell you what. You can't blame John Cheney for being upset about this no. because it completely... we got a technical foul on the Bonnies now, too. So it must be now for Jim the Jim Barron crowd. is hot, yeah. For it could be crowd. for the crowd. Yeah. And that's fair. Let's even it up at least. We're going to listen in here right now. indeed the officials clearing it up we just took a little listen they have called a technical foul against St. Bonaventure because of the debris tossed on the floor whatever it was John Cheney just said it hit him on the side of the head yeah and, and that is not part of college basketball and, and, and obviously this is something that doesn't happen very often but you hope it never happens and, and the officials at least have brought some common sense into the deal by calling a technical foul on the crowd and the technical on John Cheney for walking out on the court or going out on the court. So they even it up that way, which is at least uh, showing some common sense. Well, that's this. pretty much no class. And that's a shame because yeah. that really spoils the atmosphere that we had here tonight. Yeah, and it's, you know, the, the frustration level was high with the crowd because they're expecting a game where their team has a shot at first place for the first time ever may be propelled into the top 25 in the country with a victory so everybody is frustrated because it's not going the way the crowd wants it to but this is not the way you take it out yeah, but why it. would you do something like that when it's still just a you know a six-point game here there's no reason for the crowd to act ridiculous like sure. that or i i'm going to change that i'm not going to say the crowd i'm going to say probably one or two yeah, stupid individuals some individual that would do something like that and it's just sad that it would happen and spoil the atmosphere in this building because this is what college basketball is all about. Six-point game, 4-11 to go. Bonnie's again. Double technical foul on both teams. They will go with the possession arrow after well, Van Passen still has out. to shoot. Yeah. He's got to finish off his free throw here. He made the first one. And he got the second. Four points for Peter Van Passen. We've got the double technical now. Now they have to shoot the free throws. So Win now will be the technical foul shooter for St. Bonaventure. He has 10, and he has one more left. Timmy wins 75% three-point shooter. He's the guy they want on the line. Now we'll go the other way. And Quincy Watley will be the free-throw shooter. And, of course, you can expect the kind of reaction that he would get at the free-throw line. 88% foul shooter. He rattles the first one and drops it in. The shooter's roll. And 
He's in double figures now. He has 10. Bonnies will get possession. The arrow goes in their favor, so they have the ball now. Five-point game. Buckle your seatbelt, partner. I'm hanging there in. There we go. I'm hanging in here. That's what we came down here for. Oh. I wouldn't want it any other way. You, you didn't get that sense in the first half or even the beginning of the second half, but the bodies to their credit have come back and made a game out of it, and they've got a legitimate shot at it. Skip pass. Down low. Cyrus, baseline jumper, won't fall. He has struggled all night long. Karcher brings down the rebound, and Sanchez will move into front court for the Temple Owls. The bodies have struggled with offensive rebounding, too. Another one and done on that end of the floor. Trying to take the air out of it. Karcher, down low, Sanders, hit from behind. It'll either be Cyrus or Von Possen. Let's see who they give it to. It's going to be Von Possen, I think. Yes, it is. Peter Von Possen. He and got there before Von Cyrus did. That's right. And that's a good five because he wants to make sure that he cannot, the shooter around the basket, if you're going to foul him, make sure he can't finish the play. Great pass to set this up. But make sure he can't finish the play around the basket. Make him go to the foul line and earn the points, especially at this point in the game. That is Sanders' first point in this game. But he has played very well defensively and also as far as plugging up the lane and getting rebounds. So a break in the action with 3.34 to go. Temple 53, St. Bonaventure 46. We've got more hoops in just a moment. She has nothing. She has nothing. To... All right, here we go, everybody. We are here live on Empire. It is 53-46. Bonaventure trying to scramble back into this game. A game, Peter, that was really pretty much controlled by the Temple Owls, and they pretty much had their way in the first half. But what you said Bonaventure had to do, take the ball to the basket, try to get to the free throw line, and score when the clock is stopped. That's the way you climb back into games, and that's what St. Bonaventure has done. Yeah, they did a real nice job down the stretch, and I think right now this game will be decided at the foul line because if you're a good team like the Temple Isles rated in the top 25 in the country and you go on the road, you must make your foul shots to protect your lead. The Bonnies, on the other hand, to get back into it and take the lead will have to stop the clock and make their foul shots. In the front court, here comes Wynn. Look inside to Cyrus, nothing there. Now Von Possen, top circle. Capers, back to win. He wanted to pull the trigger, didn't do it. Capers will the way outside, got it! That's huge, that's huge. 11 points, David Capers. And quickly, timeout has been called. It is a 20-second timeout. And now it's a four-point game, and we still have lots of time remaining. An eternity. All right, quick reminder, we've got National Lacrosse League action, Rochester Nighthawks, and the Pittsburgh Crossfire. It'll be tonight at midnight. My partner Howard Simon working that contest. Once again, join us for lacrosse action coming up tonight at midnight. Well, Peter, we've been talking so much about taking the ball to the basket and trying to draw fouls. This time, they went down the center of the lane and kicked it out for the three. Still, getting into the seams of the zone, draws a defender to you, opens up that passing lane to Capers, so he has a good look at the basket. How many you can count on one hand the number of good looks David Capers has had at the basket this half? Pressure in the backcourt now by Bonaventure. Sanchez has it, and they clear out for Pepe. And he moves it in the front court on the dribble. Bremer has a defensive play. Watley takes it hard to the hoop. Won't go. Rebound Cyrus. A couple of players go down. Watley slow to rise. But he's finally up and back into the fray. Win down the Cyrus. Had it. Lost it. Out of bounds. Dribble penetration again by Timmy Wynn. Draws the defense. Had the opportunity. Oh, 
great right through the passing lane for an easy score couldn't convert well it's been frustrating all night long for caswell cyrus that'll be a reach in foul on capers 16 fouls on the bodies one more will put temple into the one -on -one. second personal foul on capers not in the bonus the officials are checking Oh, now it went from five team fouls on the scoreboard to seven. And we're having a consultation. Yes. A free one. A discussion. Over at the bench. It looks like a monologue. It is one and one. Okay. Scoreboard was incorrect. Had the bodies for five team fouls. Well, we're right in this situation we talked about. Temple to protect the lead must go to the foul line, make their foul shot. Bonnie's has to attack, stop the clock, put points on the board at the foul line. They've got to make their foul shots. The outcome of this game will be determined. Now, this is the guy you want at the free throw line. 88% hasn't let him down yet. And now John Cheney wants to talk things over for a moment or two as he calls a timeout. It's a 22nd timeout. How long, how long, Pete, does John Cheney stay in this game? You talked about his age, a very young 68. The enthusiasm, the desire, the will to win just burns with inside him. I think as long as his health holds out, he is such a major contributor to the game of college basketball. It would be a shame for the game to lose an individual like that. He's a leader in all the legislation. He's a leader in all the coaches' movements. He's He's been great with his kids. So, and, and look at the talent he has. I mean, as long as he has the talent to be competitive in his program and he's still able to recruit at that age and no one is saying, hey, don't go to Temple or using his age and a possibility of retirement, uh, against him in recruiting, he can stay on. I'd like to remind everybody, 6 o'clock, that's when you get weeknights, fan TV sports news. It's a full half hour of the sports news you need to know on the weekends. Josh Mora has it for you once again. Fan TV sports news at 6. And to wrap it up, Jim, John Cheney is such a credit to the game uh, that, that I'd hate to see him leave. And Jim Barron, who has become the number two in tenure behind Cheney in the Atlantic 10, as proving that he belongs in that league for a long time to come too. Watley knocks down the free throw. He is perfect at the line, eight of eight. 55-49, 2.25 to go. Out front, Capers, now win. Let's see if they try to get some penetration and go to Capers on the wing. They do, and he got it. Every time he's had a good look, he's converted. 14 points for David Capers. Here comes the trap by the body. Knocked away, but Temple maintains possession. Sanchez controls outside. Temple's going to control everything that happens now in the half court set. Karcher, baseline move, blocked by Cyrus, and he controls it. Great defensive set by the bodies that time. Temple doing the right thing, too, though, attacking the basket. It's just a three-point game. Capers skip past Bremer. Outside win. Now they go to Capers. Again, the perimeter passing. Inside, Cyrus down on the baseline. Spin move. Caswell puts it up. It won't fall. Rebound by Tossett. And I believe he's going to get the foul for going over the back. And they've been consistent. They called it on Temple on this end. Well, that's and how they got Lamont Barnes out of the game. And to their credit, the officials have remained consistent even at this point in the game with a minute 16 to go. That's where the foul took place, not on the initial rebound effort yep. on the second effort. Yep. Uh, toss it now with three. And we'll take the slow walk to the other end because now we are in the bonus and we're shooting free throws. Kevin Lyon will be at the free throw line. One more on Temple and the Bonnies will go into the double bonus. Well, if you want a guy at the line, that's the 
a guy. He's just a 46% free throw shooter. Down to a minute five and counting. Bonaventure trails by three. Bremer, Cyrus, baseline. Here's the skip pass. Capers, can he save it? He did. Bob Fossett's going to be short. Rebound Sanchez. He goes down in the heap, but Temple still controls. And then the reach-in foul. It'll be on Bremer or Capers, one of the two. And I believe they got Capers. It is David Capers. That's and okay. they got to stop the clock. Yes, they do. Because there's only 47 seconds left, and Temple was going to run out. Good look at the basket. Misses the shot. Pepe right there for the rebound. And look, he slips and still has the presence of mind to get the ball to a teammate. Well, here's Kevin Rod. And we talked about working on his 46% shooting percentage, and he missed it again. Well, his shooting percentage is going to dip even further. Yes. He was 46 when it started. Timeout called. 43 seconds remaining. This place has erupted again. Jim Barron and his staff have to pencil something in order for them to get back into this game and tie it. More basketball on the way, everybody. It is Syracuse basketball. It's tomorrow afternoon. It's Notre Dame and the undefeated Syracuse Orangemen. You'll be able to watch it at noon tomorrow right here on the Empire Sports Network. A terrific matchup between those two schools in the Big East. And if you're going to watch that game, there's that Murphy kid, Pete. He's a pretty good player. Oh, he's excellent. He's having a great year, and he's propelled the uh, Fighting Irish into the thick of the race in the Big East. Jim Barron coming out of the timeout. Now he had to be telling his guys, our first look is inside, strong to the basket, and try to draw the three-point play. But if that doesn't work or no one's open, then we've got to penetrate and create passing lanes to kick it out for three. Bremer and Capers are the three-point shooters. Wynn's going to take it. It's going to be off the mark. Cyrus tried to tip it. Rebound loose. Bremer in traffic. We look at the replay now. The final thing that Jim Barron has to tell his team in a timeout is, we need everybody on the boards to get us second and third efforts, and that was the key that time. Not only did they get the rebound and go up strong, Brimmer, but he threw the foul. But he couldn't tie the game, and Van Passen then commits the foul on line. And we talked about that's the right guy, but you don't want Van Passen now committing another foul. He has four. He's got four, and if this game ends up in overtime, they can't afford to go through it without him. Well, Kevin Lyde gets another chance to redeem himself. He's got inside position. Great rebound. Strong move to protect it. His first two. Well, Jim, they're in the double bonus now, so he can afford to miss this one because he has another one coming. Some of the players didn't realize that they were now on the double bonus. Absolutely. So he's got two shots. He has yet to make a free throw. And he finally does, and that's big because it makes it a two-point advantage now with 27 seconds left. Well, and the Bonnies have their three-point shooters in the game. We're looking at the chance of an unbelievable finish in this Riley Center, and I'm going to party with you in the dorms if it happens. And I believe Jim Barron stepped up and called the timeout. He did. It is so loud in here, you can't even hear the whistle. Yeah. Well, he's got 15 seconds to work with, and the Bonnies trailing by two. Wow. Jim, Jim Barron has got to be saying right now, look First look is inside, take it to the hole hard, 
and if you don't convert, draw the foul. If you miss, don't draw the foul. Everybody on the glass, because it doesn't matter about protecting the backcourt at this point. Temple would run the game, the clock out. They're not going to look the fast break. Crash the boards and get a second and third attempt. That's how Bremer got them to within one point and had a chance at the uh, foul shot on the three-point play to tie. John Chaney on the other end plays solid defense. Do not foul the three-point shooter. Or anybody going to the basket. Capers to win. Time counting down. Do you go for the win or you go for the deuce? It looks They're like going to try to go for the win here. They're going to have to hurry here. Six seconds. Here's the shot. Bremer! Good! to Jimmy Barron for having his three-guard lineup available. Three perimeter shooters, any one of them could have pulled the trigger to get the job done in that situation. It fell in the hands of J.R. Bremer. Big what shot, huge shot. One of the biggest, maybe, in this building in years. Well, you're going to see J.R. Bremer shot nationwide tonight on every newscast around the country. 2.8 seconds remaining. This place is truly Bedlam. And they have Caswell Cyrus to place against the inbounds passer so he can't get a great look. Sanchez has got it. He's got to cast it off. Count it if it goes. He missed it. Oh, what, a win. what a win. What a win for the Bonnies. here at the Riley Center as J.R. Bremer drills the big three time running down in the game and then a last second desperation shot by Pepe Sanchez hits the front of the iron off the glass and falls away yeah here's another look at the winning shot by Bremer nothing but the bottom of the net and he had a hand up in his face on that shot by the way and guess what? The game wasn't over until Pepe's shot went off the glass and rolled to the left because it hit the front of the rim up on the glass and you didn't know what it was going to do until it rolled off to the left. So a stunning victory here for Bonaventure as they are now in first place in the East Division. 
of the Atlantic 10 Conference with a 4-0 record. Temple at 3-1. UMass, you see, even at 1-1, followed by St. Joe's, Rhode Island, and Fordham. Take Bonaventure. a picture of that, Jim. That's the first time ever the bodies have been at this spot in the line, in these standings at this point in the season. It is truly bedlam here at the Riley Center, and you know they're going to party hardy deep into the night in Olead. When we come back, you will hear from some of the stars of the game after this. Welcome back to the Riley Center where the Bonnies have just upset the number 20 ranked Temple Owls 57-56 on a last second three-point shot from J.R. Bremer joining me, winning coach Jim Barron. And could you have ever expected this one would have ended this way? No, I just, uh, I know it's going to be a hard-fought game, but we persevered right to the end. And, you know, we got, you got to play to win the game. And, you know, we played aggressive. We made some, we made some changes as far as uh, running our man stuff against their zone. And we really had some good success. So it's really, really big uh, part of the strategy as far as making those adjustments. Just before that, you had tried to win the game on a Tim Wynn three-pointer. It ended up coming back around and still allowing you the opportunity. Was there a point in there where you thought you might not get this win? Well, we, you know, you're playing a great, a great team like Temple. There's no question about it. But, you know, we played the game. We knew what we wanted to run, and our guys really executed right to the stretch. Coach came out with the bang, then seemed to struggle a little bit with their zone defense, and really even coming out into halfway through that second half, seemingly still struggling, but the perimeter game really saving you tonight. Well, you know, you got to hit some shots, and we hit the right ones. And I think they're a great team. They run a great defense, but we persevered, right? We said for 40 minutes we needed to play, and I thought we played for 40 minutes. How? What did you say to your team afterwards, seeing the type of comeback that they mounted down 14 points at one point there in the second half. Well, we've done that before. We've been down before, and I think our guys really stepped up and did what we needed to do down the stretch to really overcome, a, a, you know, a tough, a tough Temple team. You are ranked, you know, in the top 40. This type of win could move you up to the high 20s. Is that something that means something to this team? Well, you know, I think we're gaining respect, and I think people are starting to notice what we're all about, and uh, these guys just done a great job. All right, thank you very much, Coach. We're going to be joined right now by Tim Wynn. And, Tim, maybe your coach won't brag about this as much as you guys will, but you guys came back from that 14-point deficit there in the second, and you obviously were a part of that. They attempted to win on your three-point shot. What did you guys talk about in your last yeah. few timeouts to try and make sure that you could get this win? Well, we've been tested like this early in the season, you know. They've tested our character all year, no matter who we were playing. You know, and we've, we've been down before at halftime, so we didn't crack. You know, we know we were dealing with a very good team at Temple, but we just kept at it. You know, our shots started falling, we started getting defensive rebounds, and that was the key to our victory. Certainly seemed like there maybe was some cause for panic at halftime when you guys were struggling with their zone defense and even heading into the second half. Your perimeter game, though, helped you guys just like it did in last year's contest. Yeah, definitely. You know, we've been down by 20 at halftime before, you know. So we, I mean, our team showed a lot of character tonight. This is what we're all about, yo. We don't, we don't stop fighting no matter who we're playing or how many we're down. Tonight we came back, our shots started falling, our perimeter game was real tough, and it, it's time to celebrate. Did your heart stop when uh, JR put up that three? No, it started beating even harder. It started beating even harder. I knew it was going in. Before he shot the one before that, I just threw my hands up. I, I mean, I got confidence in my teammates, you know. They don't let me down. I mean, if he would have missed this shot, I would have been hugging him the same way. Next game, you know, to the next game. Well, now you don't have to worry about that because you guys did get the win over the 20th ranked Owls. Congratulations. Thank you. Now let's jo be joined by the hero of today's game, J.R. Bremer, who had the game-winning three-pointer. And J.R., what can I say? It was the most phenomenal ending I've seen in a long time. Yeah, it was a good ending. We fought hard back. We was down 11 at halftime. We just tried to keep our composure. We knew our shots would fall at the end of the first half. Our shots weren't falling. We just kept taking shots, and they started falling. Was it difficult to, to stay calm in this one, considering you guys were down at 14 at some point here in the second half? Yeah, it was hard, but we just had to keep our composure. We knew what kind of team we were. We knew we could come back. We just stayed together, and we stayed together, and our shots started falling. Their players, Pepe Sanchez, some of their big guys down low, really seemed to keep you guys contained all night, but you guys really got on a run there at the end. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, Temple is a great team, and they have great players. And it's, basketball is a game of runs, and I guess we got our run at the right time. 
This is the type of win against a number 20th ranked team that could really vault you guys to the high 20s in the standings. You're already 18th in the RPI. Are you guys looking to break that top 25 here in the next week or so? Yeah, we hope we can break it, but we're just going to take it one game at a time and let the polls do what they have to do. Can you talk a little bit about what you have next? You are the only lone undefeated in the conference now. You were a preseason pick to finish third, and you certainly have a shot now after gaining this huge win to go all the way. Yeah, we got to look forward to Fordham. We played them in a week. They just got a big win today. And we know they're not a uh, slouch team, so we got to come out just as hard as we came out against Temple. All right, congratulations on that last-minute three-pointer to win the game. I'm sure it's one you'll remember for a very long time. He's safe over there, Kerry. Take yes. it easy. 57-56, an unbelievable finish. Bonaventure knocks off the 20th rated St. Bonaventure Owls. Pete and I will be back to break this one down even more right after this. Empire College Basketball is brought to you by the Document Company Xerox. Hey, Bonnie fans, March 8th through the 11th, the Bell Atlantic Atlantic 10 Men's Basketball Championship takes center court at the First Union Spectrum in Philadelphia. Ticket packages for all 11 games are on sale now. It's the final showdown of the season, and the winner advances to the NCAA tournament. Call 716-375-2500 to cheer your St. Bonaventure Bonnies all the way to the NCAAs. Follow the Bonnies in their quest to bring home the Atlantic 10 Championship March 8th through the 11th. Get your tickets now. Welcome back once again to the Riley Center. Fans still milling around on the floor, enjoying the aftermath of what just transpired. Bonaventure 57, the Owls 56, a victory peak for St. Bonaventure. They are now the only undefeated team in their conference right now with a perfect record, and that is the first loss for the Temple Owls in conference play. Jim, that's right, and what more could we ask for in a college basketball game tonight than to have it decided between two top 25 teams, and this win has to propel the bodies into the top 25, playing until the final shot of the game to determine the outcome. This will, this will continue to build the momentum, four wins in a row for the Bonnies, and will give them tremendous confidence and give them a comfort level of being able to say, yeah, we're in first place. We lead this conference. J.R. Bremer nails it with just a little more than two seconds remaining. And then at the very end, Pepe Sanchez actually got a pretty good look on this desperation shot. And it would have counted because he got it off before the time had expired. But it banged off the iron and off the backboard. And that was it. Right to the final shot. And you know, we said in the pregame show, the keys to the game where the Bonnies were that they had to try to beat the Temple zone down the floor to get high percentage opportunities. If they were forced to play five on five, that's gonna be a tough deal for them. Now, if they do have to play five on five, they've gotta shoot the three like they did last year when they made 14 threes. Guess what, it only took 13 this night. <laughs> One of the things that we should point out is through the course of making the run for St. Bonaventure to climb back into the game, one of the things that Pete Lonergan said that they must do, and that was try to take the ball to the basket and create traffic and havoc and get fouled and go to the free throw line. And they were successful at times in doing that, aside from making the perimeter jump shot. That's right. The Bonnies were eight for nine from the foul line. And most of that came in the second half. Once they were in the one and one, every time Temple fouled, they had a chance to put points on the scoreboard with the clock stop. The clock is your enemy when you're trying to play catch-up basketball against the Temple Owls. It's interesting, too, from the standpoint now that what this means to St. Bonaventure, a team that has had its problems in the past, finding ways to win games. Generally, they would find ways to lose games. Tonight, they found a way to win. Well, Jim Barron said two things. One, we persevered for 40 minutes, and we played to win. And that's what champions are made of, and that's why they're in first place. All right, let's quickly then go back to Kerry Sayers standing by with a special guest. Kerry? Thanks, guys. Right here with senior guard David Messiah Capers, who finished with 14 points on the night. More importantly, had a few key three-pointers there down the stretch. Tell us about them. Well, you know, me and J.R. have been working on our three-pointers at practice because we know we're going to have to shoot them against Temple. And, you know, with the zone, that's going to be the wide open shot. We told our big men that, you know, this game, they were going to have to rebound instead of scoring like, you know, most of the other games. But instead, you know, we had the three-pointer shots, and, you know, we just tried to take them, and we made them. And certainly last year, three-pointers were a key to victory. This year, the same thing, since their zone defense really seemed to hurt you guys. 
Yeah, I mean, that's what they do. They force you to uh, shoot the ball from far deep. And if you make them, then you'll win against them. And tonight we made them, and last year we made them. What did you think when Bremer put up the three-pointer? Did your heart stop? Did you stop breathing for a second there? Well, for, for a second, I thought it was an air ball because it looked real kind of high. But, I mean, he's been hitting them all day. And, you know, we've been working on them, like, all week, all year. And, you know, this is the thing that we've been working for. And, you know, it came, it came true. I mean, if you work hard, things are good things that happen. David, what does this type of victory against a top 25-ranked team tell you about your team? It tells us that we play a really unselfish and that we can beat anybody in the country. I mean, there was, like, 21 in the country, and I think we can play with anybody. And we showed everybody tonight, and I think it's going to, you know, it's going to affect the whole country tonight. They're going to know that St. Bonaventure, hey, they, they're a good team. We've got to play them serious now. You, you, you know now, as you said, you can play anyone in the country. Is breaking into the top 25 another goal of this team now that you've beaten the Owls? Yeah, I mean, that's, a, that's everybody's goal to be one of the Elite 25 teams. And if they if that happens, it happens. But we're not concentrating really on breaking the top 25. We want to get to the NCAA. That's our main goal. Now that you've beaten the Owls, you obviously are the lone defeated team in the conference. You were preseason picked to finish third, but do you feel like you could be first now after this big win? The momentum could carry you on? Yeah, we felt like we could be first before this game. I mean, it, just because everybody picks you third doesn't mean that you're going to finish third. I mean, it's not already picked. And we're just going to show everybody that we belong at number one. They, everybody's been telling us that all the teams below Timber should be fighting for number two. I think it should be Temple fighting for number uh, two now instead of us. In your senior year, is this the most exciting game you've ever been affiliated with thus far? Yeah, pretty much so. Uh, more that I'm, you know, I've been a part of it. I played in a lot. I, you know, it's, it's a, it's a real, you know, good accomplishment that we, um, we beat this team, and you know, we're going to try to keep it rolling. Congratulations on a great win. Thank you. Once again, David Messiah Capers joining us here. Four for five from the three-point line. A few th key three-pointers down the stretch, guys. Thank you very much, Gary. You know, it's interesting, too, Pete, that uh, what a win like this and the impact it has just on a community like this because you know this place is going to be bedlam all over the city tonight. We'll be back with more, and we will wrap things up right after this. One point win, Bonnie's over the Owls, 57-56. Welcome back, everybody. Our coverage continuing here from the Riley Center. Jim Brinson, Pete Lonergan, along with Kerry Sayers. And I guess we should just check out the final stats here. It was a big victory on J.R. Bremer's shot from the corner. It was a three. But what's really interesting here, Pete, is that midway into the second half of play, Temple was still shooting a blistering 50%, and look where they dropped off to. They end up at 34% for the game. Bonnie's had great defense down the stretch. And, of course, the other key that goes along with that great defense, that comes, that energy for great defense, comes from scoring on the offensive end. When you are frustrated like they were in the first half, their defense wasn't as good. But you get re-energized with a strong offensive effort, and that's exactly what happened to the Bonnies. They started scoring, and they played better defense on the other end. And, of course, they had terrific perimeter shooting from Wynn and J.R. Bremer along with David Capers. Let's quickly head back over now. Kerry with another interview. Kerry? Thanks very much, guys. Currently joined here now by Bonna President Dr. Robert Wickenheiser, and this certainly has to be one of the most exciting games that you've been affiliated with in your six years here. Well, it ranks at the top, certainly ranks at the top here at Bonna and ranks at the top all time. I mean, how can you say anything but uh, I was listening to somebody say JR doesn't have a shot back, and then he hits not only one, but three. I mean, the guy's got it all, but it's a great win for the kids, great win for the school, uh, wonderful for Jim Barron. I mean, God knows the, the team. Uh, they hung in there, but the biggest thing was the comeback. I mean, once once you go back against Temple, that's almost miraculous. So uh, somewhere somebody was pulling for us. <laughs> Doctor, can you tell us or describe the feeling that this school has had after waiting almost three full decades to see the Bonnies have a season like this and get off to such a great start? Well, I think that you know you, you always got believers, and 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 I think the believers are the ones that hung firm for three decades. You got those who say. Uh, Monoventure's days are over, and I, I don't believe that. I think once you've got tradition, it's it, you go back to it and you build on it. Uh, you may be the underdog, but they've said that about the Buffalo Bills and other teams, and, and they come, keep coming back. Uh, I, you know, I think we simply have shown that we can come back. I mean, now, now it's a matter of doing a lot of other things, and this is just one, one win, albeit a wonderful win to have, one that will get us, I think, the national recognition we deserve and that the kids certainly deserve, and, and, and then you, you take it from there. I mean, this. The players, this, the nice thing about this team is they just don't believe they're going to lose. They believe they're going to win. And they, I think they've made believers out of, certainly out of those of us who are followers. I, don't, I haven't missed the game since here. 
and uh, since I've come and 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 I know fans have been consistent over the three decades you alluded to and and we you know a firm believer hangs in there and uh, these 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 kids have pulled together and said we're not going to lose well doctor congratulations on a great great school win not only for you and the team but for the school as well Everybody, thank you much thanks for covering too thanks You're for welcome. being here thank you and guys back over to you okay carrie well is your pacemaker okay? It's all right. Okay. I survived. I'm just checking you. Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> we had a great time calling it. It's a one-point win for Bonaventure. What a great finish tonight. Hey, for more college basketball action, undefeated Syracuse Orangemen go against the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Orangemen trying to stay undefeated. You can watch it tomorrow at noon right here on the Empire Sports Network. Listen, tonight's game at the Riley Center has been produced by David Tasca and directed by Dave Dennis Bullets Galloway. A terrific job once again by all of our crew for Kerry Stair, Pete Monaghan, and myself, Jim Brinson. Boy, what a great ride tonight. Good night, everybody.